welcome to the Inovia Conversation. I'm Steve Waltz. No, wait. I, no, I'm Steve Waltz. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Actually, I'm Jeff Pergalski, and I am joined today not by my partner in crime, Steve Waltz, but by a friend of uh, a friend of the podcast, can we call you? You've been a guest host before, as well as a guest, um, our own Holly Kudel. Welcome, Holly. Well, thanks, Jeff. It's fun to be here, as always. That's right. Steve is on vacation, so we decided to have a... Uh, um, our first ever, I think, podcast without Steve. I don't know if we're going to be able to handle it. Right. Well, at least we'll get to talk. We'll get yeah. a word in edgewise, right? <laughs> that, yeah, that's true. We're um, we're going to limit the number of times we say CRM in this podcast to uh, to three or less. So I've already used up one. So we have to okay. we have to avoid that. So um, what do you think is a um, what's going on in support? What's going on at Anovia? What do you want to talk about today? Sure. So, you know, Jeff, it's an exciting time at Inovia. Uh, we just see growth and change all over the place. Addition of new departments, addition of uh, new levels of, uh, of the team members and how people are doing things. And so it's exciting to be part of the Inovia team, new customers and clients coming all the time. Um, you know, one of the fun things about our job is you don't get bored. Uh, it's not going to the same job, doing the same thing every day on the same type of a product. It's always something new and different. And I think we're in every field and industry there is out there. Yeah, that is a good point. I know that uh, as a uh, member of the sales team, our uh, our structure has changed a little bit with the uh, promotion of Kevin Clifford to sales manager. So, um so yeah, that uh, that introduced a new, uh, a little bit of a new structure on the sales team. So, um, how many people do you have on the support team now? Right. So we now have thirteen people. Wow. Fourteen. So we're the baker's dozen today, uh, and continues to grow. And as you said, change in structure and adding uh, that layer with a, a sales manager. You know, we are currently going through some value stream mapping and uh, structure for the support team. As we grow, uh, there's a need to put some layers and levels in there uh, to assist us. And so we're working through that now. So making some changes and some good uh, process mapping moving forward, which is exciting. And uh, we've added, shoot, four people since the new year to the support team. In the last, uh, I guess, just over three months, four people, that's uh that is great. Uh, that is great growth. So getting back to the uh, value stream mapping, who um, at Inovia is helping lead us through that process? Right. Uh, so Gary, ah. one of our sales uh, account managers, he um, has done it in the past. Again, uh, we always talk about our account managers being just a bunch of brilliant businessmen who have been through the ranks. And now we brought them to Inovia to assist all of our clients. So at the same time, they assist us. And so Gary is one of those uh, gentlemen that just has brought some real, real brilliance to the team. And uh, so even though we're virtual right now, we have a wall full of sticky notes and uh, hmm. working through all of our processes and, and learning and looking for things that we can do more efficiently and, and help better and work down the road. So it's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah, I think... Uh, I know that that um, I actually haven't sat through a value stream mapping with Gary. Um, I, I did a few with uh, with Alan and with Bob, um, but I imagine as we uh, look at our own process, we're we're learning things just like when we help our customers do that, and that's always a. Uh, um, it's an important process, and I think sometimes um, undervalued how complicated it can be. And and I've been in conference rooms that have you know had walls that were forty feet long by ten feet high, and we covered like seventy five percent of those with uh, with sticky notes. So it would be interesting to see how the uh, virtual sticky note wall looks at Anovia. But uh, I imagine I will be, uh, or I should say, I trust that I will be the beneficiary of of whatever you guys guys come up with in uh in terms of helping our customers out and uh 
Yeah. So, so in, uh, so things are obviously busy here if we're adding to the team. Um, what, uh, what sort of backlog are we looking at now with the support tickets as they come in? All right. So uh, we started out the year really strong and um, customers really rallied uh, and started doing some automations and changes and report updates and uh, new clients coming in with things that they were uh, needing from us. And so we were we were getting up there till being about a week out, having to uh, pull resources uh, where we could from our project teams to help out to keep us moving forward. Uh, while we got hiring in place and a couple people did move on from Anovia, uh, so that added to it. Uh, but now that we are up to 13 and we have everyone in place, we're like about two days. We're scheduling around two days out uh, for the general work. So our break fix, as always, is um, as it comes in, it's a priority. Anything that's a break fix or system down, ticket gets addressed immediately. And then the rest of our work is about two days out scheduling wise. Nice. So um, we might as well use uh, use this time uh, to maybe market to uh, to some potential uh, employees. Like what would you say about uh, to someone who's considering a uh, a job on the support team? Um, what makes Inovia um, the support team in particular uh, a great place to to work? Yeah, the support team is a great place to work. Uh, it's a, a, an interesting skill set. They're a unique group of people. Uh, they're not just consultants and developers and technicians. They're, they love customer service. So on the support team, you really have to be an advocate for customer service and customer care and wanting to spend time with the clients. Uh, in comparison with on the project teams where you're behind the door more of your time working on things uh, than being directly customer facing on support team. It's all day customer facing and working uh, with the clients. It's fast paced. Uh, you know, as I said, we work in every industry and uh, you may be helping out, making sure the chickens stay alive the first hour of your day and the next hour you're making sure the tulips are growing at another company and then we're getting meatballs out to somebody else in the afternoon. <laughs> So you're just jumping all over the place industry wise and also now wise, you know, so we have customers that go all the way back. We, we used to be able to say to to the very first version, but I believe that group has now moved on and upgraded. So pretty much, you know, back to 3.7, we have customers running all the way through the brand new SaaS. So during the day, you could be in every possible version there is uh, helping clients. And so you have to be able to jump back and forth quickly and and adjust to those different versions and uh, assist things. Uh, you need to be able to work under pressure because when they call us, they're not excited about a new upgrade. They're usually panicked because something's broken, right? You know, something's right. not working and they're stressed out and they need something fast and help us out and make this work and let us ship. The trucks are waiting. And uh, so you have to be able to handle those kind of calls too and, and uh, keep your cool. So. Uh, fun place to be, great place to be, and like I said, an incredible group of people uh, that support our clients. But uh, it's definitely a hopping place to hang out. Uh, yeah, well, I've always been, um, uh, you know, I, I like the fact that some of our most senior um, people are part of the support team in terms of, you know, nav experience. Are we uh, mixing in some new people that uh, that we're uh, maybe don't have as much experience? So it's a, also a, a good place to learn. That's a great place to learn. That's a, a great point, Jeff. Um, so we do bring in some young consultants and developers and uh, work with them and train them up. Uh, we haven't had a lot of opportunity. It's usually one person here or there at a time. But now as the team is growing and we've got a really strong senior group on the support team, now we can uh, mix in possibly a few more of those where we have a developer and a couple consultants and maybe even a tech that's working as juniors underneath the team. Uh, so as that as the team grows, we have more capacity to bring in the younger people and we all know, quite frankly, we're all getting grayer and grayer in the nav world. Uh, so somebody's got to grow up the next generation to take our places at some point. So it, we need to start doing it in-house a little bit more than we have. Right. Yeah, I know that uh, that as you know, I've um, 
been here, I think, 12 years, and and we've we've always, I think, uh, it's really difficult in the NAV space to to grow your own talent, and you have to get to a certain level, size wise, and operational maturity uh, before you can you know, have the resources and even the capacity to share some people to not be billable. And, you know, and and we have to make sure, first of all, obviously, I guess that we're taking care of our customers. And then after that, you know, we're the second priority. Let's, you know, see what we can do to train some people up. Um, I was on a, uh, I was on a demo yesterday and uh, the company that we were demoing to, um, they said that the first, and I was also on with uh, Deb Adler, and she was, um, they, they were both sharing that the first version that they started with was two point something of, of NAV. And I said that had predated my experience because uh, my experience was uh, only went back to, I think, 3.7 maybe. Um, and that was when I started at uh, at Anovia. That's what we were running. So um, so the idea that uh, that we take care of um, that as a support team, we're taking care of. I, I guess on one hand, it's probably nice that we're focusing um, on one application. Um, but as you mentioned, we have to be able to work from the brand new BC SaaS um, and uh, and all the way back. So so do we have um, are there are there people that specialize like on the support team that you, there are people that specialize more in the older version and they would get tickets from that? Or does everyone just have to sort of know a little bit about everything? Everybody works on everything. So um you know, there, there's those of us who have been around longer and uh, can jump into 5.0 and 3.7 quicker than others, but um, everyone has that ca- capability. Our junior developers and consultants are trained and work on tickets alongside the seniors, whether it's 3.7 or the Business Central SaaS. Everybody gets involved and, and works and learns. I think there's still great value to some of the uh, early architecture and seeing that and working through that, um, you know, even though it's becoming more and more obsolete and a different type of code, I think there's still some history there that carries forward and is good for them to see and be part of. Um, plus it's fun, you know, it's still fun. I do have to say when I go to Classic for a customer, I have to sit for a minute trying to figure out where is my list um, it's always the funny thing is, you know, you're so used to the list popping up and in, in roll Taylor client that uh, you go back to a, a classic client and I'm, you know, waiting like what happened to my list? My list is gone. And then you realize like, oh, the, it doesn't come up like it doesn't roll Taylor. You have to click the F5 to get your list to pop up. Um, oh, yeah. Little things like that that change over time uh, that are, you know, just different little tweaks and things or certain Things get moved, bookmarks and things that you have to remember where they are in the different versions. But yeah, that really throws me for a loop. Like uh, I'll occasionally be on with a customer, and and they're asking about, uh, you know, hey, can can you help us uh, install this new license file? Or oh, sure, no problem. And then I get on like and see their version, and I'm like, wait a minute, where am I? This is uh, this looks completely different. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, that is interesting. I was I was wondering about that. Um, so everyone gets a um, a general level of experience, and uh, um, and that probably is good because I, as you said, I think there's some value in understanding where the application has come from. And every time you get a little bit of experience in the older versions, um, probably helps you. Um, help customers appreciate what, what we've got in the new version and maybe sometimes why things operate the way they do or the way the application looks, um, stuff like that. So, um, all right, so we've uh, we've made it uh, through uh, um, a good chunk of the, the podcast without uh, throwing Steve under the bus. Um, what can we, uh, what can we, well, how can we have fun at Steve's expense while he's not here? I don't know, he, uh, I get a break when Steve's not here. Oh, uh, keep telling not. him hey, he brings in clients so quickly. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I get a little breather. <laughs> so you, you know? get uh, you haven't had any onboarding calls this week, is that? Uh... No onboarding calls this week while Steve's out. He did get one scheduled while he's out. Wow. But, but 
the the true the consummate sales professional he is uh he is closing deals while he's on vacation good for him well that's uh that's good considering we um i guess we made it to friday of his uh of his vacation week without uh um and and he was asking about you know are you guys uh you know uh, we really should be recording another podcast, but I'm on vacation, and uh, and I could hear the uh, trepidation in his voice when he was uh, um, uh, when he was thinking about us having a, a podcast without him. I really think this is uh, his baby, and, uh, yeah. and 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 he loves it, and he uh, he does a, a great job of uh, of of getting people. Uh, you know, we've had actually, I don't even know. Um, uh, how many podcasts we've done i know that you've probably been on uh maybe four or five now so you are definitely our uh, um our, our most popular uh um uh guest but uh i i guess the uh is there anything else that uh that you want to talk about on this episode before we uh before we wrap it up sure let's talk about steve and what he does, you know, I mean, he's, he's such a good guy, you know, and um, a lot of the clients that, that he brings in um, are a little wounded and, um, and, and just, you know, in a bad spot. And uh, he really talks to them and, uh, you know, walks through that pain with them and the struggle with them and the process. And, you know, he's honest with them. And, you know, he when he brings them in, he brings them in in a place where, like, you know, he's really ushered them in and assisted them and, and made them feel comfortable and welcome and, you know, encouraged them to, you know, make the right decisions. And he does it in a really, really great way. He's not pushy. He's not, you know, trying to, like, force them into to fit into the Anovia groove. He really feels out. And works with them to make sure that we are the right fit for them and, and we're the, the right team to help them and uh, be there for them. And I think that's really cool. That's a, I think that's a really neat part of our process and our company is that we're not just out, you know, bombarding people saying, come over here and, and trying to sell them on Anovia. We're, we're out talking to clients and making sure that this is the right fit for them and uh, that they're in a good place. Right. Yeah. He is, uh, he is, um, really, um, he has always been, um, the, uh, uh, the true sales professional and he's always, I think, been a little bit, uh, um, I don't know. Frustrated is the uh, is the right word, but the, with the makeup of the sales team uh, being primarily not um, salespeople, but ha- you know, um, team members like Mary and Pat, and De- that you know have um, experience in other facets of of the business world, but then bringing that expertise to uh, to the sales team, and then Steve always wanting to uh, um, you know to to sort of remind us that uh, as a salesperson, there are certain things. Um, that you have to do, and and really, like you said, he's uh, he's really empathetic to uh, um, to the people that he's bringing on, and he's so passionate about about Inovia that I can remember when he first started, and you know, he would come to me like Jeff, how do you know all these things, and um, you know, like the the tech world is so uh, is so different from the the world that he came from in healthcare, and. Um, but but he's done a great job bringing himself up to speed and i think really when he understood that he doesn't need to know everything about um about the erp world or about microsoft dynamics he needs to um understand um, the pain points that our customers are are going through and then needs to understand you know um and uh, what anovia does well and and he quickly became an expert on that and uh, that's probably the reason that he is so successful and keeping you so busy with onboarding calls is that uh, he he marries those two uh, those two things together well so i guess we'll uh, we'll let him take a uh, take a week off for spring break he's uh, He's out in Las Vegas. I haven't uh, received any texts from him uh, indicating that he's uh, he's won big or lost big. So uh, hopefully he's having some some fun out there, and I, I'm sure he is uh, doing a little bit of gambling. Um, has he messaged you while he's been out? No, he hasn't. Like I said, he had Jim, uh, our other engagement uh, person. Uh, send me the uh, request for the onboarding next week on his behalf. So he's got someone working in the background while he's away. 
Um, mm -hmm. I haven't heard from him, so mm. no big wins. He's not coming home. Emails. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe maybe he is. Uh, he's hit it so big that uh, that we will have to look to replace him. We'll, for our sake, we'll say we uh, we hope not. Even though uh, that would be good for him. All right. Well, um, I think that uh, I think that we've done a pretty good job in his absence. Um, and uh, um, let me see. I'm, uh, let me check my list here to see if there's anything else we missed. No, I don't think so. Um, I was just hoping to get through the call with or get through this uh, podcast without Steve calling and uh, and asking me, um, hey, did, did 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 you guys do a podcast while I was gone? Because then I was going to, uh, you know, I'll, actually, it would have been great. I, I should have called him and then we could have like dragged him in from uh, from remote. I guess it might be a little bit early uh, out in Las Vegas, so we'll let him sleep in on a Friday. All right. Well, um, anything you have to add? Hey, just, you know, to our listeners and to our clients that are out there and to our employees that listen, you know, uh, we really do love you and uh, you make our lives enjoyable and uh, worth getting up in the morning to hang out together, whether it's uh, coworkers or customers or ISVs. Uh, it's a great community and I'm just grateful to be part of it. Well, that's a great message to end on. Thank you, Holly, for joining us. And uh, until next time, we will see you on the Anovia Conversation. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thank you.